Welcome back to the ACS Bulletin Brief from the front lines, Surgeons Voices. For this episode, we have two very special surgeons with us, Dr. David Hoyt, the Executive Director of the American College of Surgeons, and Dr. Patricia Turner, the Director of Member Services for the American College of Surgeons. I'd like to start with Dr. Hoyt. David, could you tell us some of the many reasons why we should all be excited about the imminent to begin annual clinical Congress? Sure, and thanks for talking to us today. The, the thing that's amazing about this way of, of seeing the content is that basically in five days time, 2,400 and or so pieces of content will be available. That's not only gonna be available during that five days, it's gonna be available for really through the end of, of this year. So. For the next four months, you will have access to uh, over 150 panel sessions, over uh, a thousand presentations and scientific posters, to over 300 videos of surgeons uh, showing their particular interest in a particular operation, panel discussions, content for medical students, content for residents, and uh, the opportunity to interact with your colleagues through chatting about all this. I think uh, the other thing that's very exciting is you're going to be able to curate this in, in the sense that you can create a playlist of what you would like to see. Normally, you go to the American College of Surgeons Clinical Congress, you can see what you can cram in in three days. But you always go wishing you'd seen this or that. You won't actually have to do that this year. You can actually, if you want to spend the time, you can see everything. And you can get CME credit for up to 200 hours. So uh, those are just some of the features that will sort of balance the fact that we won't have as much social interaction. So no question, we're going to lose something. But the staff and the fellows and the program committee and everybody that's been working the last three months has put together just a terrific program. Thank you very much, Dr. Hoyt. Dr. Turner, to follow on those lines, can you tell us a little bit about how we've been doing for registration for the meeting? It's been very exciting. Uh, registration has been open less than two weeks, and we already have about 14,000 individuals registered for the meeting. So um, it surpasses the number that we often expect to see face-to-face -face at Clinical Congress, and we fully expect that number to keep growing because uh, we have a whole other week before the meeting starts. Um, of those 14,000, we have representation from some 125 countries around the world. So this will truly be um, the house of surgery for all surgeons around the world uh, coming together for Clinical Congress. Uh, we're pretty excited as well because this is our biggest class of initiates ever. Uh, we have um, at least 2,120 and maybe one or two more um, initiates that will be inducted as fellows of the ACS this year. So that is our largest class in the last uh, decade. Um, and we're really excited about that as well. As Dr. Hoyt said, it's going to be a different kind of meeting. We won't be together face-to-face -face in Chicago, but we will do everything we can to create an environment that's engaging and participatory uh, and then look forward to seeing everyone hopefully face-to-face -face next year in D.C. Thanks very much. Just, just to put those numbers in relative context, what would our normal registration be at an annual clinical congress? We're up to 14,000 already from 120 plus countries. How, how would we normally fare in terms of overall number, international, and percent of the overall who are international? Yeah, we, we, we would normally get around 10,000 or so uh, that would physically show up, and about 20% of those would be from international. Right now, we're, as Patricia just said, uh, over 14,000, and half of those are international, and about a third of those are not fellows. So the, the, the meeting's free this year. Uh, that's for many reasons, but we're hoping to attract people that will come and take a look at what we offer, and maybe that will encourage them to become members or come subsequent years. But uh, that, those are the, the demographics. Thanks very much, Dr. Hoy. Um, Dr. Turner, to, tur to turn back to you, one of the highlights for many people is the induction, the convocation, which also includes the honorary fellows. And, and maybe you could talk about how the convocation is going to work this year, and then I'll ask Dr. Hoyt for a few comments about the, uh, the nine honorary fellows to be inducted. 
So um, thanks for that question. Convocation is really one of those iconic events in the life of a fellow. I think we all remember when we were inducted and what city we were in and the pomp and the circumstance, and it's really quite extraordinary. Um, this year, because we have to do it um, remotely, it'll be a little bit different, but we're actually opening with a montage of some of the headshots of our 2100 um, initiates. So there'll be a chance for some of those faces to be seen. Um, we'll move into uh, some of the elements that people will recognize, as you said, the honorary fellows, which you and Dr. Hoyt will discuss, um, the uh, presidential address, that is clearly a, a highlight of the evening, the, the transitioning from the president-elect to the president, that whole handoff will happen, and there will be a, um, an address by the RAS chair. So again, our initiates are really the, the crux of that evening, and so the RAS chair has a chance to give an address. Um, to her colleagues. Um, there are also some of the named awards that are given out uh, that day, and those are, you know, very important in the life of the college, and so they have that sort of place of honor on the Sunday night. So one of the important things to note is that that will not be behind a registration firewall. So for those initiates who might be looking at this, um, your friends, your family, your colleagues, anyone can participate. There will be a link to watch the convocation that will be open to anyone. And not just those who've registered for the meeting. Excellent. And uh, even if one does wish to register, it's certainly easy to do so. And the price is right, being free. <laughs> uh, Dr. Hoyt, can we turn back to you? And, and again, although, although the, the convocation is about the initiates and their families, we also do uh, at that time have the induction of some honorary fellows. And, and maybe you could kindly comment on, on what that, how that will be handled this year. Normally, we either have an in-person introduction or more recently a written introduction about that person and that person would stand up and uh, shake the hand of the, the president as they become an honorary fellow. Yeah, and, and just to pick up on what Patricia said, we're gonna try and preserve some of the things that people associate with convocation. So for instance, the music, uh, the order in which we go through things, we'll have a very nice invocation um, to sort of set the spiritual and importance of, of what we're actually doing. It is about uh, the uh, new initiates. And uh, I, I just want to say publicly, we have grown every year uh, since Dr. Turner has been with us uh, in terms of the number of young people that are initiated. We've grown an international membership as well. And uh, that, that is a real sign of health of our organization and the fact that we're really trying to uh, meet the needs of young surgeons. But the uh, other tradition we have is to honor people around the world that have had extraordinary careers in surgery. And that's what the Honorary Fellows is about. We have literally hundreds that are still living. We honor all those that, that would normally come to the, to the meeting uh, in the opening ceremony the next morning. And we, we recognize the this year eight that will be uh, formally uh, inducted. They, uh, to uh, deal with the virtual aspect of it, we've asked each one of them to, in their native language, uh, make a comment. And so again, if you tune in on Sunday night at six o'clock, you'll get to see each of the fellows uh, recognize uh, how they feel about becoming a member of the American College of Surgeons. Just one more thing to add that, that I didn't mention that's really important in, in following up on what Dr. Hoyt just said is we also are recognizing our fellows um, that are on their 25th and 50th anniversary as fellowship. And that's also incredibly meaningful. So there are the classes of fellows who were inducted 25 years ago and then a, a class of fellows that were inducted 50 years ago. And we recognize them. They've all received letters from us by now. There's actually a medallion that we would typically give them if they were, um, if we were meeting face to face. Um, but I think that's another really nice thing that we recognize those individuals who've really um, participated in the life of the college over their entire careers. And that happens at convocation as well. Thanks. A another group who is recognized during convocation and, uh, and also during uh, the opening ceremony are presidents of various uh, societies, or I suppose that's really only during the opening ceremony, but the presidents of the various societies. So we have uh, surgical societies and other societies in the United States, as well as surgical societies from overseas. How, how are we gonna handle that aspect this year? Yeah, that's gonna be represented by uh, literally showing a picture and the name of every individual in the United States that's a member of a, an associated society or organization 
and internationally as well. So that when you, uh, you know, look at the profile, uh, you're going to see the world of surgery, no question. Fantastic. I always find that a very exciting part of the program, as we are, as Dr. Turner said, the house of surgery. Uh, and, and it's really attested to by the presidents of all of these organizations from the entire world coming and being with us from all six inhabited continents, uh, which is really quite gratifying. Um, Dr. Turner, any additional comments or points you'd like to make uh, about the Congress? Um, just two more points. Um, one, uh, for all those individuals who are going to attend, it's important to highlight that ACS Central, which is your one-stop shop for everything related to the ACS, is going to happen virtually as well. Um, that is something that we typically have in the exhibit hall in every division and every area, every program and service and value that we provide is represented there, and you can get all of your questions answered. We're doing that remotely this year. So I think for anyone who has any questions about anything whatsoever related to the ACS, there is an ACS Central that will be staffed in real time um, by our staff. So you can go there um, from the website and get your questions answered. The second thing is that um, for those who are attending who aren't members, uh, we're waiving application fees uh, if you apply during Clinical Congress. So again, that's something that we would typically do in real life. So if you came to the meeting, um, and you were a non-member attendee and you wanted to apply because, of course, you know, the, the information is so valuable, we would welcome you and we would waive the fee. So we're doing the same thing this year. So there will be member services staff um, standing by to help you um, process applications and that sort of thing. So we hope that of those non-members that are going to uh, try out the ACS Clinical Congress, that we can convert them to members. Fantastic, giving people the benefits of the ACS, not just during the annual clinical Congress, but all year long at, again, an incredible price. Well, thanks, Dr. Turner. I'd like to ask you, uh, Dr. Hoyt, about the workforce, uh, the time and, and the effort uh, drive that went into creating it. We know about Dr. Ford and the program committee, but behind the scenes, there certainly must have been a lot of effort on the part of a lot of people. Yeah, it's it's been it's been incredible, and from my position and, and the position I hold, it's it's very gratifying to see when people respond to a problem and 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 produce something that's that's really remarkable. And it does start with the program committee. Dr. Ford led the program committee to uh, reconfigure the entire meeting in a very short time. They worked on that this summer. Uh, we made a decision to expand that and uh, really give most of the content once we got experience using the, uh, the, the experience we had with the quality and safety conference. But then literally about 190 people in the college turned on a, on a dime and changed their job, worked with uh, the 2,000 uh, present presenters to uh, get their talks ready, get them done, get them loaded on a platform, get them, get them uh, accurately uh, looked at and, and assure that they run properly and that they're appropriately uh, formatted, et cetera. And that takes dozens and dozens of hours. Our, our staff has worked very, very hard. But what they've done is they, they've really produced something that I think people are gonna be very, very impressed by. And it's also uh, made us stronger as an organization, both from the standpoint of our fellows contributing and our staff uh, doing what was necessary to get it to go. So it's really been a team effort and I, I couldn't be more pleased with, with that. And uh, the engagement of the regents, the program committee and all of our, our presenters has just been remarkable. I don't think this year you can find an excuse to not try and come at least for a while. And I would encourage everybody, um, if you haven't been for a while, um, you're going to find a couple of things. One is how easy it is. And I think the most important reason we have it is to keep ourselves educated. And I think you're going to be truly engaged by the educational content you discover. It's going to pull you in. You're going to say, oh, I want to do that. And rather than have to go away and get in a cab and go to the airport and realize I can't see that this year, you're actually going to be able to see it next week if you want. And so take advantage of that. Try that out. This is the new way we're all being exposed. And this is sort of the hidden benefit. Um, so I just end by saying, try it. You'll like it. Are we offering a prize for anyone who sees all 200 hours of content? Uh, that, that, yes. And we will be announcing that very shortly. 
Well, thanks for all you've done. And thanks, of course, to Dr. Ford and the program committee for putting on the spectacular show, really turning uh, turning on a dime to, to take an in-person live meeting of over 10,000 surgeons and converting it into a virtual online platform. I'm looking forward to it. I can't promise I'll see all 200 hours, but I do plan to see as much as I possibly can. Thanks well, to we'll both We'll keep you. you track, Steve. So if the prize gets to you, you'll get it. Thank you.